from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's The Cube. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Hi everybody, Dave Vellante here with Stu Miniman. We're here to unpack the recent acquisition that IBM announced of Red Hat, $34 billion acquisition, financed with cash and, and debt. And Stu, let me get it started. Why would IBM spend $34 billion on, on Red Hat? Its largest acquisition to date of a software company had been Cognos at five billion. This is a massive move. Uh, IBM's Rometty, Ginny Rometty called this a game changer. And essentially, our, my take is that they're pivoting. I mean, their public cloud strategy was not living up to expectations. They're pivoting to hybrid cloud. Their hybrid cloud strategy was limited because they didn't really have strong developer mojo. Their Bluemix PaaS layer had really failed. And so they really needed to make a big move here. And this is a big move. Uh, and so IBM's intent, and Ginny Rometty laid out the strategy, is to become number one in hybrid cloud, the undisputed leader. And so we'll talk about that. But Stu, from Red Hat's perspective, it's a company you're very close to and you've observed for a number of years. Red Hat was on a path touting a $5 billion revenue plan. What happened? Why would they capitulate? Yeah, Dave, uh, you know, on the face of it, Red Hat says that IBM will help it. Uh, further its mission, uh, we, we just listened to uh, Arvind Krishna uh, from IBM talking with Paul Carmier uh, at Red Hat, uh, and they, they talked about how they're going to keep the Red Hat brand alive. Uh, IBM has a long history with, with open source. Uh, as, as you mentioned, I've been working with Red Hat, gosh, almost 20 years now, and you know we all think back to two decades ago when IBM put a billion dollars into Linux and really pushed on open source. So uh, these are not strangers. They know each other really well. Um, part of me looks at these from a cynicism standpoint. I, so somebody on Twitter said that you know Red Hat is hitting it at the peak of Kubernetes hype, and therefore they're going to get maximum valuation uh, for, for where the stock is. Uh, Red Hat has positioned itself rather well well, uh, in the hybrid cloud world, uh, really the multi-cloud world, when you go to uh, AWS, when you go to the Microsoft Azure environment, uh, you talk to Google, uh, that open source fits into that environment and Red Hat products specifically tie into those environments. Uh, I remember uh, last year in Boston, uh, and there's a video of Andy Jassy talking about a partnership with Red Hat. This year, up on stage, Microsoft with Azure, partnering deeply with Red Hat. Uh, so Red Hat has done a nice job of moving beyond Linux, but Linux is still at its core. Uh, there definitely is concern that the operating system is less important today than it was in the past. Uh, it, it was actually Red Hat's acquisition of CoreOS for about $250 million earlier this year that really put a fine point on it. CoreOS was launched to be just enough Linux to live in this kind of container in Kubernetes world, and Red Hat, of course, like we've seen often, the company that is saying, we're going to kill you, well, you, you go and you buy them. So, you know, Red Hat wasn't looking to kill IBM, uh, but definitely we, we've seen this, this trend of software is eating the world and open source is eating software. Uh, so, you know, IBM hopefully is embracing that open source ethos. Uh, I, I, I have to say, Dave, for myself, a little sad uh, to see the news. Red Hat being the paragon of open source, the one that we always go to for winning in this space. Uh, so we hope that they will be able to keep their culture. Uh, we've had a chance many times to interview Jim Whitehurst, really respected CEO, uh, one that we think should stay involved in IBM deeply for this. But if they can keep and grow the culture, then it's a win for uh, for Red Hat. Uh, but uh, still, you know, sorting through everything, and uh, it, it feels like a little bit of a capitulation uh, that that Red Hat uh, d decides to sell off uh, rather than keep its mission of getting to five billion and beyond and, and be the, the leading company in the space. Well, I think it is a bit of a cap capitulation because look, Red Hat uh, is a three billion, roughly $3 billion company growing at 20% a year, had that vision of five billion. Its stock in, in June had hit $175. So while IBM's paying a 60% premium uh, you know, of, 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 of its current price, it's really only about eight or 9% higher than where uh, Red Hat was just a few months ago. And so I think, there's an old saying on Wall Street, the first disappointment is, is never the last. And, and so I think that Red Hat was looking at a long slog. They, they reduced expectations, they guided lower, um, and they were looking at the 90-day shot clock, and this probably wasn't going to be a good 
another you know couple of years for Red Hat, and they're selling at the peak of, of the market, or roughly at the peak of the market. They probably figured, hey, the window is closing, potentially to do this deal. Maybe not such a bad time to get out, as, as opposed to trying to slog it out. Your thoughts? Yeah, Dave, I, I think you're absolutely right. When you look at where Red Hat is winning, uh, you know they've done great in OpenStack, but there's not a lot of excitement around OpenStack. Kubernetes uh, was talked about lots uh, in the announcement, in, in the briefings, and everything like that. Uh, I was actually surprised you didn't hear as much about just the you know core business. You know, you would think you would be hearing about you know the you know all the companies using Red Hat Enterprise Linux around the world. Uh, you know, this, that that ratable model that Red Hat uh, really has a nice uh, base of their environment, it was really talking more about the, the future and where Kubernetes and Cloud Native and all of that development will go. Uh, IBM has done you know, middling okay with developers. They have a strong history in middleware, uh, which is where you know a lot of the Red Hat development activity is, is has been heading. Um, it was interesting to hear the you know on the call. It's like, oh well, you know, what about the customers that are using IBM to say, oh well, if customers want that, we'll still doing it. What about you know IBM with Cloud Foundry? Well, absolutely, if customers want to still be doing it, they'll do that. So you don't hear the typical, oh well, we're going to take Red Hat. The technology and you know push it through all of IBM's channel. Uh, it, it is really this is in the IBM Cloud Group, uh, and that's really the, their their focus as it is. I, I feel like uh, they're almost limiting the potential for growth uh, for Red Hat. Well, so IBM's going to pay for this, as I said, with it's an all cash deal. IBM's got about fourteen and a half billion dollars in the balance sheet, and so they're going to take out some debt. S and P lowered, downgraded IBM's rating from from an A plus to an A. And so it, the, the, the ratings agency is going to be watching IBM's growth. IBM said this will add 200 basis points of, of growth, revenue growth over the five year CAGR. But that means we're really not going to see that for you know, six, seven years. And so, and Ginny Rometty stressed, this is not a back end loaded thing. We're going to find you know, revenue opportunities through cross selling and, and go to market. But I, we have a lot of questions uh, on this deal, Stu, and I want to sort of get into that. So first of all, IBM's Again, I, for, I think it's the right move for IBM. It's a big move for IBM. You know, rumors were that Cisco might have been interested. I'm not sure if Microsoft was in was in the mix. So, you know, IBM went for it, and as I said, didn't pay a huge premium over where their stock was back in in June. Now, of course, back in June, the market was kind of inflated, but nonetheless, the 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 strategy now is to go multi cloud, be number one in multi cloud. Well, wh what is that multi cloud leadership? How are we going to measure multi cloud? Is is IBM now the, the steward of open source for the industry? I mean, to yeah. your point earlier, you're sad, Dave, Stu, I know, yeah. but. It, it, you bring up a great point. So I think back to three years ago with that Wikibon, we put together our true private cloud forecast. And when we built that, we said, okay, here's the hardware and software and services in private cloud. And we said, well, let's try to measure hybrid cloud. And we spent like six months looking at this. And it's like, well, what is hybrid cloud? I've got my public cloud pieces and I've got my private cloud pieces. Well, there's some management layers and things that go in between, and you know, do I count things like PaaS? So, do you say people like you know Pivotal and Red Hat's OpenShift are those hybrid cloud? Well, but they live either here or there. Uh, they're not usually necessarily helping with the migration and moving around. I can live in multiple environments. So, Linux and containers live in the public. They live in the private. They don't just fly around in the ether. <laughs> so, right. uh, you know, the, the measuring hybrid cloud I think is really tough. Um, you know. D does IBM plus Red Hat make them uh, a, a top leader in this hybrid multi-cloud world? Absolutely, they should be mentioned a lot more. When I go to the cloud shows, the public cloud shows, IBM isn't one of the first companies you think about. Red Hat absolutely is in the conversation. It actually should raise the profile of Red Hat because while Red Hat plays in a lot of the conversation, they're also not the first company that comes to mind when you talk about them. Microsoft middle of hybrid cloud. Oracle, positioning their applications in this, this, this multi-cloud world. Of course, you can't talk about cloud, any cloud, without talking about Amazon's position in the marketplace, and SaaS is the real place that it plays. So IBM's, you know, one of their biggest strengths is that they have applications. You know, Dave, you know the space really well. Uh, you know, what does this mean vis-a-vis -vis Oracle? Well, so, um, Bef well, let's see. So, so Oracle, I think, is looking at this, saying, "All right, well, I, I would say I, Oracle is IBM is Oracle's number one competitor um, in, you know, in the enterprise. Not, not necessarily. I mean, you got SAP and you know Amazon, obviously, in cloud, et cetera, et cetera. But let me put it this way: I think Oracle is IBM's number one competitor, whether Oracle sees it that way or not. But they're clearly similar 
companies in terms of the vertical integration. I think Oracle's looking at this saying, hey, w there's no way Oracle was going to spend $34 billion on, 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 on Red Hat. Um, what, what, and I don't think they would have, or interested in really spending any money on, on the alternatives, but does this put Canonical and SUSE in play? I think Oracle's going to look at this and sort of message to its customers, look, we're already number one in our world in hybrid cloud. But I want to come back to the deal. I, I'm actually optimistic on the deal from the standpoint of, of, I think IBM had to make a big move like this because it was you know, largely just bumping along. And, and, but I'm not buying the narrative from Jim Whitehurst that, that well, we, we had to do this to, to scale. Why couldn't they scale with partners? I just didn't, I don't understand that. This is, they're open. This is largely to me a services deal. It was a big boon for IBM services business. In fact, Jim Whitehurst, and, and Ginny even said that today in the financial analyst call. Jim said, our big constraint was services scale and the industry expertise there. So what was that constraint? Why couldn't they partner with Accenture and Ernie Young and, 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 and PwC and, and, and the likes of, of Deloitte to scale and, and preserve greater independence? And I think that the reason is IBM sees an opportunity and they're going hard after it. So how will or will IBM change its posture relative to some of those big services plays. Yeah, Dave, I, I think you're absolutely right there because Red Hat should have been able to scale there. I wonder if it's just that, you know, <laughs> all of those big service systems integrators, they're working really closely with the public cloud providers mm -hmm. and while Red Hat was a piece of it, it wasn't the big piece of it and therefore I'm worried on the application migration, uh, I'm worried about the adoption of infrastructure as a service and Red Hat might be a piece in the puzzle but it wasn't the driver uh, for that change and the move and the modernization uh, activities that were going on. That being said, you know, OpenShift was a great opportunity, it plays in a lot of these environments. Um, It'll be really interesting to see and a huge opportunity for IBM to take and accelerate that business uh, from, from a services standpoint, you know, do, do you think it, it'll change their position with regard to the I, SIs? I don't. I think IBM's going to try to present, uh, preserve Red Hat as an independent company. I would love to see IBM do what, what, what you know, EMC did years ago with VMware and float some portion of the company and, and, and truly have it at least be quasi-independent with an independent operating structure and reporting structure from the you know, standpoint of, of a public company, that would be, that would really signal to the partners that IBM's serious about maintaining independence. Yeah, now, I mean, I mean look Dave, the, you know, IBM has said they will keep the brand, they will keep the products. Um, of all the companies that would buy Red Hat, I'm not super worried about kind of polluting open source. There, it was kind of nice that you know Jim Whitehurst would say, you know, if it's a Red Hat thing, it is 100% open source. And you know, IBM plays in a lot of these environments. Uh, I, I had a friend of mine on Twitter was like, oh hey, uh, IBM's coming back to Open Daylight or things like that um, because they'd been part of Cloud Foundry, they'd been part of Open Daylight. There's certain ones uh, that they are part of it, and then then they step back. Uh, so you know, IBM credible in the open source space if they can let Red Hat people still do their thing. But right, the concern is that lots of other companies are going to be calling up project leads uh, and uh, contributors in the open source community that might have felt that Red Hat was the ideal place to live and, and now they might go get their paycheck somewhere else. There's rumors that um, that Jim Whitehurst eventually will take over IBM. I don't see it. I just don't I just don't don't think Jim Whitehurst wants to run, you know, Z mainframes and services. It's just that's not that doesn't make any sense to me. I think IBM's gonna you know Ginny's Getting to the age where she's, she's she, IBM CEOs typically retire, you know, within the next couple of years, um, and, and and so I think that it's more likely they'll they'll bring in somebody from internally, whether it's Arvind or, or more likely Jim Cavanaugh, because he's got the relationship with uh, with Wall Street. Let's talk about winners and losers. It's just again huge strategic move for IBM. Uh, frankly, I see the big winners as IBM and Red Hat. You know, because as we described before, IBM was struggling with its with its you know execution, and Red Hat was just basically finally hitting a wall after 60 plus quarters of, of growth. And so, the question is, will its customers win? The, the big concern I have for the customers is IBM has this nasty habit of raising prices when it does acquisitions. We've seen it a number of times, and so. You know, keep an eye on if I were an IBM customer, I'd be or a Red Hat customer, I'd be locking in some attractive pricing long term, and I would also be calling Mark Shuttleworth and get his take and get that you know Amdahl coffee cup on, on my <laughs> desk, as it, as it were. Um, 
Other winners and, and losers, your thoughts on some of the partners and, and the ecosystem? Yeah, uh, you know, when I, when I look at this and say compare it to Microsoft buying GitHub, we're all wondering, you know, is this a real game changer for IBM? And if they embrace, uh, you know, the, the direction, uh, it not, it's not like Red Hat culture is going to just take over IBM. Uh, there, there was, uh, in the Q&A with, with IBM, they said, will there be influence? Absolutely. You know, is this uh, marriage of equals? No. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we are buying Red Hat and we will be, you know, communicating and working together on this. Uh, but uh, you can see how this can help you know, IBM is the, the direction. Uh, open source in the multi-cloud world is a huge important important, important piece. Um, Cisco, I think, you know, could have made a move like this. Uh, I would have been a little bit more worried uh, about maintaining open source purity if it was somebody like Cisco. Uh, there's other acquisitions. You mentioned, you know, Canonical and SUSE are out there if somebody wanted to do this. You know, the, the role of the operating system is much less important than it is today. You wouldn't have seen Microsoft up on stage at Red Hat Summit this year if, you know, Windows was the driver for Microsoft going forward. Uh, the, the cloud companies out there, uh, to be honest, it, it really cements, the, you know, their presence out there. There. Uh, I, I don't think AWS is sitting there saying, oh geez, we need to worry. They're saying, well, IBM's capitulated, realizing that, you know, sure they have their own cloud in their environment, but they're going to be successful only when they live in and around and amongst our platform of Amazon. And Azure's going to feel the same way and same about Google. Uh, so, you know, th th there's that, dyna that dynamic well, there. What about I, VMware? I, uh, so, I think VMware absolutely is a loser here. Um, when I went back to say one of the biggest strengths of IBM is that they have applications. Uh, when, when you talk about Red Hat, uh, they're, they're really working, uh, you know, not only at the infrastructure layer, but, you know, working with developers and working in that environment. The biggest weakness of VMware is they don't own the application. I'm paying the licenses to VMware, and in a multi-cloud world, why do I need VMware as opposed to, you know, Red Hat and IBM or Amazon or Microsoft uh, have a much more natural affinity for the applications and the data in the future. And what about the arms dealers, you know, HPE and Dell in particular, and, and, and of course Lenovo, wouldn't they prefer Red Hat? Being independent? Absolutely, they would prefer that they're going to stay independent as long as it doesn't seem to customers that IBM is trying to twist everybody's arms and get you onto Z or Power or something like that and continues to allow partnerships uh, with the HPEs, Dells, Lenovo's of the world. I, I think they'll be okay, so I, I'd say middling to impact, but uh, you know, absolutely they'd prefer. You know, Red Hat as an independent um, was really the, the Switzerland of the marketplace. You know, there were th Ginny cited, Ginny Remedy cited three growth areas. One was Red Hat scale and go to market, and you know, so I, I think there's no question about that. IBM could help with Red Hat's grow to mar go to market. The other growth vector was IBM's products and software on the Red Hat stack. I'm less optimistic there because I think that it's the strength of IBM's products in and of themselves that are largely going to determine that success. And then the third was services. I think this, this is. I mean, I think IBM services is a huge winner here. I mean, <laughs> having Having you know the bat phone into Red Hat is a is a big win for IBM services. They can now differentiate, and this is where I think it's going to be really interesting to see the posture of Accenture and, and those other big guys. I think IBM can now somewhat differentiate from those guys, saying, "Well, wait, we have you know exclusive or or not exclusive, but but inside baseball access to Red Hat." So that's going to be an, an interesting dynamic to watch. Your, your, your final thoughts here, Steve. Yeah, yeah, Dave, absolutely. On the product integration piece, the, the question would be, uh, you're going to have open APIs, this is all going to work uh, with, with uh, the entire ecosystem. Couldn't IBM have done more of this without having to pay $34 billion and in, in, in put things together? Uh, services absolutely will be the measurement uh, as to whether this is successful or not. Uh, that's probably going to be the line item in financials uh, that we're going to have to look at because, uh, Dave, going back to, you know, what is hybrid and how do we measure it? Uh, you know, what is success uh, for this whole acquisition uh, down the line? Any any final pieces to, you know, what we should watch and well, uh, how we measure that? So I think that, well, first of all, IBM's really good with acquisitions. So, you know, keep an eye on that. I think, I think IBM's, I, I'm not so concerned about the debt um, IBM's got strong free cash flow. Uh, Red Hat throws off a billion dollars a year in free cash flow. This should be an accretive uh, acquisition. Um, uh, in terms of operating profits, it might take a couple of years, but certainly from a standpoint of free cash flow and revenue growth, I think it's going to help you know, near term. If it doesn't, that's something you know, that's really important to watch. And then the last thing is culture. 
I mean, you know a lot of people at, at, at these companies. I know a lot of people at these companies. I, I, I really want to see, I mean, look, the Red Hat culture drinks the Kool-Aid of open. You know this. Do they see IBM as the steward of open? And are they going to face a brain drain? That's why it's no coincidence that Whitehurst and Rometty were down in North Carolina today, and Arvind and, and Paul Cormier were in Boston today. This is where a lot of employees are for Red Hat, and they're messaging. And so that's very, very important. IBM's not you know, foolish. So that, to me, yeah. Stu, is a huge thing. Is I, the I mean, Dave, IBM is no longer the you know navy suit with the red tie and uh, everybody buttoned down. Uh, you know, people are concerned about like, oh, IBM's going to give the Red Hat people a, a dress code. Sure, the typical IBMer is is not in a graphic tee uh, and, and a hoodie, but. Uh, uh, I mean, Dave, you, you, you've seen such a transformation in IBM over the last couple of decades. Yeah, definitely, and, and I think this, this really does, in my view, cement now the legacy of Ginny Rometty, which was kind of hanging on, on Watson and Cognitive and this sort of bespoke set of capabilities and, and the soft layer acquisition. It now all comes together. This is a major pivot uh, by IBM. I think strategically it's, it's, it's the right move for IBM, and, uh, and I think if in fact IBM can maintain Red Hat's independence and that posture and, 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 and maintain its culture and employee base, I think it does change the game for IBM. So I, I, would, I would say, smart move, good move. Expensive, but probably worth it. Yeah, where else would they have put their money, Dave? <laughs> yeah, right. All right, Stu, thank you very much for unpacking this announcement and thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.